Earlier this morning, we talked to Mike Bellotti, former head coach of the Oregon Ducks from 95 to 2008, College Football Hall of Famer, and the color commentator for ESPN tonight. He will call the game at Lavelle Edwards Stadium with Dave Fleming. And we got his national perspective on a lot of different things revolving around BYU football. Take a listen. BYU football on the national stage again tonight. Mike, good chance they'll be favored in every remaining game on their schedule. Let's play the hypothetical game. If BYU goes undefeated, and I know that's a big if, what's the best-case scenario for BYU's bowl game situation? Well, the best-case scenario is to get into the national playoff. I mean, the reality is they're a little bit dependent on what happens in the Power Five conferences, in all honesty, uh, because I'm not sure that their strength of schedule – uh, is going to be strong enough or valued enough. And, again, that's not any fault of theirs. They're trying to do that type of thing, and they're a very, very good football team. I just think that the committee will look at it and say, you know, what happens now, and are there undefeated uh, conference champions? It looks as if they may not be from the Pac-12, but you never know. So it's always interesting. And I think the one thing about this whole playoff situation is, strength of schedule and the evaluation will go down to the very last game of the season. There's going to be nobody, you know, we're going to pencil this guy in right now. It's not going to work that way this yeah. year. Yeah, and it's fun to project, but you're right, it's going to change a lot. What kind of shot do you actually give BYU of finishing the regular season undefeated? I think they have a very good chance. I think that they are a quality team, you know, looking at their schedule going forward. I mean, you can say any of those could be a trap game, but the reality is I think that they're uh, and I'm, I'm going to look and take a quick peek here. You know, Central Florida, uh, Nevada's playing well. Uh, Boise is always tough, but they may not be as good as they've been. You know, they're playing Cal. It looks like uh, late October, uh, late November, and who knows? You know, what that Cal team you know, can score a lot of points, but sure. can they play defense? So it's just it's going to be more or less if BYU takes care of business. And with Broncos' philosophy about you know it's a nameless, faceless opponent, we're just we're going against ourselves every week. I think they have the right approach and the right attitude. It's going to be more, you know, can some of the other Power Five conferences fall off? Is there a one loss or a two loss champion? And BYU has to win their games and then continue to hang around and hope that, you know, something good falls their way. Mike Bellotti, ESPN college football analyst and former head coach of the Oregon Ducks on BYU Sports Nation. Coach, you brought up Bronco Mendenhall. You coached against him in the 2006 Las Vegas Bowl. You know him. Given what happened last night between Arizona and Oregon, can you pretty much guarantee that Bronco is, is bringing that up at some point today for his team to avoid an upset tonight against Utah State? I, I think he'll remind them about the point spread and that that doesn't win games. And, uh, you know, I, I love Bronco's intensity, his attention to detail. Uh, he's an awesome football coach. And I, I always said this. I got a chance to talk with Taysom Hill yesterday. I said, how's it? How's it, what's it like playing for Bronco Mendenhall? I said, anybody named Bronco has to be pretty tough, doesn't he? <laughs> and he laughed, and he, and he just said, yeah, I think so. And, and I just said, well, because I think it affects their entire team. When I watch BYU play, the one thing that – two things stand out to me. On offense, how physical the offensive line is. I mean, they're playing from snap to whistle. There's a tremendous amount of aggressive, uh, almost violence in what they try to do. And then on defense – those guys are flying around and the numbers of players in the picture at the end of the play and they're flying to the football and that's what you want i think some of the greatest compliments i ever received as a coach was from other coaches saying wow yeah. your players play really hard and i know that people say that about a bronco mendenhall coach byu team you had a similar situation with what byu and bronco mendenhall has with Taysom hill joey harrington the heisman campaign the giant uh, billboard in Times Square. What's it like as a coach to try and go through a season with a Heisman Trophy candidate like you did with Joey Harrington? You know, well, it's nice because you've got, you've got a guy that obviously is a great player. And, you know, we talked to uh, Bronco yesterday. He started off the conversation by saying, let me say this. We have a very good quarterback, a very good player, and a very good leader, and he can cover up for a lot of deficiencies with our team. And I, I think that that's one way to put it. I also talked to the administration just about the Heisman Trophy process and what they're doing. And they're sort of going along, and they're going to ramp it up as Taysom makes plays, as he continues to gain ground, and that they'll put more things, they have the, the website, all those things can be somewhat of a distraction, but it sounds to me as if the team, the coaching staff, 
recognizes what kind of player Taysom Hill is. He's he's a difference maker, and in that regard, I think everybody's in very much supportive of what he can do. And I don't think they're overstepping their bounds and trying to create things that are not there, but they're just you know playing off of what he accomplishes on the field. Mike Bellotti, ESPN College Football Analyst, will provide color commentary for the game between BYU and Utah State tonight. 8.15 Mountain Time starts live on ESPN. He's with us on BYU Sports Nation. The last time a non-P5 won the Heisman was 1990, Andre Ware. The year before that was Ty, Ty Detmer. I may have my years off there by a year, but regardless, it's been a very long time. Can a non-P5 player legitimately win the Heisman Trophy? Yes, it, it just is few and far between, and I think it has to be an exceptional year in that um, a player has to just be so good and overcome scheduling, overcome the national perception that if you don't play at a Power 5 conference school, you're not as good. And I, I, we know that's not the case, uh, but, but certainly... Taysom Hill, and, and look what happened to Marcus Mariota last night. Yeah. You know, he probably got knocked down a little bit. You know, guys like Gurley, guys like Petty, uh, you know, they're just, uh, you know, some of the new youngsters on the block. Uh, Anu Solomon may be in that conversation. Sure. Kenny Hill certainly is. But it's just going to, it's such a fluid situation. And it's based on when you get that big stage, how do you do, how many people see it? When, uh, when you look at what Taysom's doing, he's not putting up astronomical numbers, but the fact that BYU is undefeated is certainly helping. And in your opinion, do you think BYU needs to blow some people out to have a chance to get in the New Year's Six, or is just winning enough? I think just winning's enough right now. I think certainly some people are going to look at, you know, margin of victory. Uh, it, you know, who knows, because it's the committee this year, and I don't know how transparent they're going to be about what their criteria is. Yeah. But I, I do think that Blowouts aren't necessarily in my mind, because I, I don't think that ups your status. I think winning a close game against a quality opponent where you're the prime mover in that game, that to me makes a greater statement about how important you are and how great a player you are. Mike Bellotti, ESPN College Football Analyst, former Oregon Ducks coach from 95 to 2008, when inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2014. Speaking of the Hall of Fame, Mike, tonight a big night for Jim McMahon. He was inducted into the BYU Hall of Fame. He'll be in the building. Do you have any sort of a relationship with Jim? Or, and if you don't, what do you think about his career in college and in the pros? Well, I, I don't have a relationship with him. I, I, I know of him. He's a character. I, I got a chance <laughs> to almost coach against him. Uh, I coached at Weber State in 79, and we had to play BYU. And I think Mark Wilson played that year in place of Jim McMahon. He was on the roster. Yeah, right, uh, You know, he's, he's an amazing athlete, uh, and he is a great athlete, but he's also a great quarterback. Um, you know, some of the issues with his career down the road are, are well documented. But, no, he sounds like a guy that would be very fun to have a conversation with, maybe very fun to go out and play golf or go fishing or just tell stories with. When you look at BYU's team, a lot of positives going on right now. What's one question mark you still have about the Cougars? Well, I think if you talk to the coaches, there's two things. And, and one is Taysom's consistency as a passer, um, you know, when it's an obvious pass situation. He's a great runner, the, maybe one of the best dual threat quarterbacks. He has improved his accuracy. I think there's still times where his consistency is in question. And then the second thing is, from a defensive standpoint, it's – more consistent pass defense when the ball's in the air. I know they were very frustrated. I think they do a great job against the run, but they're giving up more yardage than they want in the back end. And it's just, you know, as, as all coaches who coach secondary or talk about secondary plates, getting their eyes right. They're primarily a zone team, so it's really hard. People think zone should be easy. Zone is much more difficult to teach than man-to-man. Man-to-man, -man, man I got that guy. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change. But in zone, you've got a key, you know, sometimes one, two, and three. The receivers, who's the first guy, second guy, third guy? You've got to be aware of who's the deepest or widest in your zone. And they're doing a great job of that. But I think I know that they believe they can do better. Mike, no team is immune to an upset performance like we saw with Arizona and Oregon last night. What scenario would have to happen for Utah State to stun BYU in Provo? Well, the, the, the typical recipe is 
a couple of plays on special teams where you can either steal a possession, you can, in other words, going for it on fourth down, a fake punt, something like that, scoring, getting a return for a touchdown, getting a big play that sets up an easy touchdown, and then the other thing is turnovers. You create turnovers with your defense. You give your offense an opportunity uh, to take advantage of those. And, and the offense has to take advantage of turnovers. If you get a turnover in the red zone, you've got to capitalize with a touchdown. I think if I was Utah State, I would be saying we've got to get a couple plays on special teams that change the momentum of this game. We've got to create some turnovers. We've got to capitalize on the turnovers. You know, it's, it's one of those things that you try to create some momentum, and it may not be on the average down. It's going to be on third and fourth downs. But a lot of times your success on third down is predicated on how you do on first down. First down affects what t- – is it a manageable third down, you know, whether you're on offense or defense. So it's, it's a complete game, but it's more a mindset. I think both of these teams respect each other. I don't think they look at the point spread. They, it's an in-state rivalry. And I do know that both, both coaching staffs have talked about how emotional they believe this game will be. Coach, we appreciate the time. You can watch Mike Bellotti on the call for ESPN tonight at 10.15 Eastern time. I also hope you're gaining some life expectancy back now that you're not a head coach anymore. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, yeah, I hope so, too. My wife hopes so, too. I, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I, I still get my football fix, and this is the way I do it. Uh, it's certainly not as stressful. In fact, my wife texted me last night after the Oregon game said, that, gee, this is too stressful. I'm glad you're not coaching. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, great to have you on BYU Sports Nation. All right. Thanks, guys.